All right. Welcome, folks. I want to give an introduction to homomorphisms. So a homomorphism between two groups, G and H, is a map between them that preserves the group structure. So let's call the binary operation on G dot and the binary operation on H, you know, circle. So phi of A dot B, A and B combined in G, has to be equal to phi of A, giving us some element in the group H, combined with phi of B, another element now in the group H, combined together using the binary operation in H. Every isomorphism is a homomorphism, but not vice versa. You could have homomorphisms that are not isomorphisms. So every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Isomorphisms, because they're bijective, they're always between two groups of the same size, okay? Homomorphisms could be between groups of the same size or it could be between groups of different sizes. All right, so let's look at an example homomorphism that's not an isomorphism. Let's take phi that maps z mod 2z to z mod 4z as follows. z mod 2z only has two elements. So let me just tell you where they go. Um, phi of one, well, let's start with zero. Zero is the identity. Zero will map to zero. It turns out the identity is always going to have to map to the identity to have an homomorphism. And let's send one to three. Okay. In other words, phi of, well, let me leave it as that. How about this? Let's draw a picture. So, We have z mod 2z here, and we're mapping to z mod 4z. So we have to decide where the two elements go, 0 and 1. And we'll map 0 to 0. 1 won't get hit. Oh, goodness. I've made a tragic mistake. That three should be a two. One will map to two and three won't get hit. All right, so if I wanted to picture this homomorphism, it's sending zero to zero. It's sending one to two. One and three won't get hit. And, and that's, that's my picture of this map phi. zero goes to zero, one goes to two, and one and three don't get hit. Let's verify this property. Maybe another way to define this map is phi of j is equal to two times j. Right? Zero goes to two times zero, which is zero. 1 goes to 2 times 1, which is 2. OK. So to verify, that phi is a homomorphism, note for all elements A and B in the input group, z mod 2z, we have Okay, this is what I'm trying to check. So on the left, I have phi of A combined with B in Z mod 2Z. I can plug in the formula. That's just two times A plus B, which we know is two times A plus two times B. And this is in fact 
phi of A plus phi of B plus is also the operation in the output group Z mod 4Z. Okay, so that's our verification that this is a homomorphism. Um, I should also say, note this phi is not on to, it doesn't hit one, it doesn't hit three, right? So we, we don't have an isomorphism because we're not on to, so we can't be bijective. Why do we care about homomorphisms? You know, I won't give you the full answer, but one reason is we're finding additional structure inside of Z mod 4Z. So inside of Z mod 2Z, I have this multiplication table. So this is just my multiplication table for Z mod 2Z. Now, Z mod 4Z is a more complicated group. It's not that complicated, right? But pretend we had some super, super complicated group that we were trying to understand. All right, and it has various elements. Inside this larger and potentially more complicated space, what you can realize is you can realize a little copy of Z mod 2Z. All right, so here's Z mod 2Z. We know what its multiplication table looks like, this red, blue checkerboard. Inside of this larger group, Z mod 4Z, we see that same red blue checkerboard okay so we're realizing that some of the patterns of z mod 2z exist inside of z mod 4z and they're exhibited by this homomorphism so that's just a little bit of intuition why homomorphisms are so powerful think of this as a group of size 1 million and you're trying to understand it well if you understand the homomorphisms from smaller groups inside that's taking you a long ways All right, let me do one more example of a homomorphism in this video. Let's go in the reverse direction. Let's consider an homomorphism from Z mod 4Z to Z mod 2Z. There's multiple such homomorphisms from Z mod 4Z down to Z mod 2Z, but I'll only show you one. Let's map phi of j to j mod two, okay? So I'm mapping from z mod 4z to z mod 2z. And let's see where things go. So we have zero, one, two, and three in Z mod 4Z. Zero maps to zero mod two, which is zero. One maps to one mod two, which is one. Two maps to two mod two, which is zero. And three mod maps to three mod two, which is one. So I sort of have this collapsing map. Zero and two both get mapped to zero and one and three both get mapped to one. So this, in this example, we're not injective or we're not one-to-one. -one. So therefore we're not on two. And let's, let's verify that phi is a homomorphism. So we're gonna verify this property. 
combining two elements before we map over gives the same answer as combining two elements after we map over. Um, okay, so to see V is a homomorphism, note V of A plus B where A and B are, are in uh, Z mod 4Z. That's A plus B mod two. And when you're adding things mod two, it doesn't matter whether you add them and then take a mod two, or if you first do A mod two plus B mod two. Okay, and that's just V of A. V of A is defined as A mod two plus V of B for all possible inputs. So in summary, um, homomorphisms are like isomorphisms. They preserve the group operation, but you no longer need to sort of preserve the size of the group. You can have elements that are not hit in your target group, and you can have elements that collide coming from your input group. Um, so we've gotten rid of this one-to-one -one and onto or bijective criterion in isomorphisms. And once you cut out that condition, you have sort of a simpler definition, um, which is a group homomorphism, a map between two groups preserving the group structure. Public questions. Thanks so much.